Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I thought we'd create another video today. My husband is watching football or about to watch football or it's this evening or something. I think it's Man United. So and I, I thought I'm coming out the way and I thought I'd spend a bit of time with you instead. Why not? So what am I creating today? I know sometimes when we sit and decide what to create, for me anyway, it always seems to be about the new release because obviously when a, when a new release comes out, I have to concentrate on that, obviously, to promote the new designs. But what I thought I would do today is I, I, I sort of looked through my stamp sets and thought, which ones haven't I used for a bit? That's what I like to do sometimes because it inspires me to use things in different ways. Also, I was stressing and thinking, well, I've got no more new techniques to show you or whatever. But I thought, well, it doesn't matter about new techniques all the time. It can be about old techniques that I've shown before, just with a different card style. So I thought that's what we'd do today. So what I've got is I've got smooth white card. This is the reverse of Centura Pearl, or you can use Pink Frog card, whichever you prefer. And this card is six inches by six inches that I've uh, cut this card. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to score one inch intervals. So one inches, two inches, three inches, four inches, five inches. Just in case you can't count to six, I just thought I'd go one to five, just in case you know what I'm like. Now, if you're scoring properly, on a scoring tool you're supposed to score the front and the back not just one side because then it breaks down the fibers properly so you're supposed to score the front and back do i always do that no do i heck but if i'm trying to be a professional that's what you're supposed to do so just mind that out of the way now i've done this technique for many many years at least over 20 years I've been doing this for but I always think it's an, an easy technique to do and it's, it's so effective so what you need to do is you score at one inches you fold that line and you go over the score lines and score them again so you're reiterating those score lines so that you can definitely see them and the crease line is very prominent you want the crease line to be prominent because we're going to do the faux wood panelling technique and it's you just need it to be so that they're really prominent can you see that the score lines are very prominent so let's just put that out of the way because then we've got one less thing to clutter the desk and do you know what i've been doing today i've been decluttering clothes now it's very embarrassing because i've got clothes i've had for 30 years how embarrassing is that and so far, I've got seven bags. I was, I was losing the will to live when I got to the eighth bag and thought, no, I'm going to have to do a video and do something creative instead. So I'll carry on with that tomorrow. But why do I save all these clothes? I don't know whether you do that, but I've got wardrobe upon wardrobe full of clothes I never wear. And I'm thinking, what's the point? I may as well store craft products in there and hoard them instead. Oh, I'm terrible. Anyway, moving on as you do. What I've got is I've got two colours. I've got vintage photo and gathered twigs. Now you can do this in any colour. So if you want a shabby chic style, you can do it in like your pinks and your mauves and your purples and, and add a bit of cream and white over the top. So you can make it shabby chic if you want. I'm going for a vintage look. So I'm going to go with the vintage photo first. And what you need to do is hold your ink pad loosely don't try and hold it too tightly but not so loosely that you keep dropping it on the desk and you're likely going to swipe it across your card now if you hold your ink pad with your two fingers and place your other finger on there it's sort of you press very lightly now if you've got some ink pads that are that are old and they're drying up this this is that they are perfect for this technique Turn your card around. Now, the reason that you're turning the card around is so that you hit different areas on the card. So turn it around again and hit different areas. So you turn it round each time. 
And by reiterating those score lines, if I just lift that up, you can see it hits those score lines and makes it look more like wood panelling. So it's not a new technique. I've, I've done it for at least 20 odd years when I started doing it. But you literally drag your, car, your ink pad across the card. It looks beautiful in greys. It looks beautiful in blues, whatever you want. But just keep dragging it across the card. Now, don't if you've got an ink pad that's very, very juicy, then what I'd say is practice with a drier ink pad first. I'm used to it, so I can do it with a very juicy ink pad. But with a very juicy ink pad, you really need to press very lightly. Then what I do is I take a darker colour, which is gathered twigs, and then I drag down with the gathered twigs all over and then move it around. You, what's good about moving it around as well is you get these darker areas here, which when you think about wood panelling, you do get darker areas. So it just catches the edges and makes them a little bit darker, which adds to the whole effect. And then I'm going to show you something else afterwards just to add what, what you can see from adding it. And I'm just pressing a little bit harder, but my ink pads are not too juicy, so it's not, not a problem. They're not overly juicy. So let me just show you that. Can you see you've got these darker areas here? You've got your, your score lines that are really pronounced because we re-scored them. So the ink has caught there and gone down into the crevice, which makes it look more like wood panelling. And also you get these areas here where the ink pad grabs hold of the card in different places because you've moved the card around. That's what makes it look more effective and more like wood panelling. Now, if you want, you can actually change that up a little bit. I'm not going to on this occasion, but say I wanted to tone it down a little bit what I sometimes to do is bray it over with a dry brayer what I mean by that is I use a brayer with a tiny touch of white paint or cream paint cream for the brown and I bray it over very lightly just like I do with the ink pad I do with the brayer and I I bray her over just to give it a lighter, shabby, chic effect. But I'm not doing that on this occasion. But you can just see how it looks just like wood panelling. And if you wanted, I mean, if you were creating a book like this, if you can imagine a book and then you've got your two covers, can you imagine you could create a lovely book with that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very simple card. And what I want to do is I want to use these stamp sets. I've not used my B stamp sets for a while, so I thought it's about time that I use them. So that's what I'm going to do. And what I've got here, I'm going to show you a couple of techniques. I'm going to show you making the card and then I'm going to do a paper cast of the stencil. I'll show you how to do a paper cast of the stencil to give you another background. So what I'm going to do now is grab some spare card. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hexagon stencil and I'm just going to draw around it like so. And I think I'm going to have three hexagons just because, well, that was really drawn straight, Tracy, because I just like odd numbers and I think we will have one that's a different size there we go and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those out and it's it's lovely I mean what time is it now it's 6 41 on Thursday evening in the UK so good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are in the country but it's beautiful here in the UK um, it's been a bit of a cool day, but the birds are singing at the moment and I'm sitting in my craft room while my husband watches his programmes and it's great because nobody can disturb us because we won't get any post or any knocks at the door. So hopefully we won't have any buzzing like I normally do. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these hexagons out. You could cut as many hexagons out as you wish, 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 and you could create a patchwork kind of effect. I've also got a hexagon stamp, um, an older one, and it's a beautiful hexagon stamp. You could actually use that with it as well. Just... Put these out preferably in a straight line Tracy not like you've been out on a night on the tiles so just cut those hexagons out just wondering whether my a6 stamps are handy because I can show you that hexagon stamp just so that you can see if you haven't got the stencil and the, I also like to show that there are so many stamp sets that work together it's amazing so what I'm doing is I'm just going through I can't remember the number yes I should remember the numbers but unfortunately I don't there's so many stamp sets now that it's just mind-boggling I can't remember let me just see must be here somewhere you, you forget how old some stamp sets are I'm sure it's not that far back. And of course, you always know the stamp set that you're looking for is the stamp set that's the hardest to find, of course. Of course it is. Just make sure it's not in there. Oh, there it is. That is the stamp set. So this stamp set would go beautifully with the B. So you could make a patchwork of these with the B. And can you imagine them in ultra thick as well? They would look fabulous in ultra thick. They really would. So what I'm going to do now is I've got these three hexagons. Just bend my card a little bit the other way. And what I'm going to do is I will have them laid out. I don't know how I'm laying them out at the moment until I've stamped them, but sort of similar to this. So they're overlapping, but we, we, we shall see, see what we feel like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Heart Grunge stamp set. I just adore this stamp set. I mean, let's be honest, I love all my stamp sets or else I wouldn't, I wouldn't design them, but I do love them. What I'm going to grab, I've just grabbed my Versafine Claire Pinecone ink pad. I didn't get everything out because sometimes I don't know where I'm going with the design. I knew that I was doing the wood panelling, the faux wood panelling, but I, I didn't know what else I was doing because I didn't decide on the stamp set until five minutes when I arrived upstairs. So what I'm going to do is have these here. That's that's. Yes, we've got the stamp the right way. Let me just... Like so. Just so that we get all parts of the hexagons. So I've just laid the hexagons down. And you can use your acrylic block if you wish. I'm not using an acrylic block. I'm just using my stamp as is. Just because it'll give it a little bit more randomness. And I can lift the stamp just to see if I've got everything stamped. I just think that's a fab background stamp. Absolutely love it. So let's just wipe that up. I get into the habit of just cleaning up my area just so that I don't get in a total mess, which, trust me, I often do. And what I need now is an ink blending tool. So I'm just looking for one that's got some brown on. So I've got my cut and dry foam. And what I'm going to do is just blend a little bit of colour just on the hexagons. Now, I don't want to colour the whole hexagon because I want to leave some of that whiteness just to make the card pop. If you want it completely vintage, then you can colour everything completely with the vintage photo i just love the fact that i've got that little that little touch of white it sort of gives it a glow so brightens everything up just because you say vintage doesn't mean it has to be dull and boring 
you know brown isn't dull and boring it depends how you make your creations it can be interesting as well and i have to say vintage product projects are one of my favorites so we've got these hexagons here and what you could do is you could set them up how you'd stamped them if you wished so we've stamped them where's the six from it's from where's the six from it's actually in the heart isn't it is it isn't it funny you, you use a stamp and then you think where's the pro yeah so it's like that isn't it and then like that so if you want you can have them as you'd stamped them but i don't want that i, I want it a little bit more just a little bit more random i don't know about you but i faff so much it's ridiculous and i've got this wood slice i want to use as well so i want the hexagons to be in the background and the wood slice will go here yes that's fine so what I'm going to do is, where's my little stamp? Has it stopped? Has it dropped inside? Yes, it is. Because my stamp sets need washing, the stickiness has gone a little bit on the back. So they need a good clean. Because they've got embossing powder on and everything. So what I'm going to do is just play around with these a little bit more. I want it to look like you've definitely got a, a hexagon. Right, let's stick these down. That glue is no good. Where's my adhesive? There it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some black cotton. Let's make sure it's black cotton. The other day, this is polyester and it that doesn't. Why I picked up a polyester thread, I don't know. Please say this isn't polyester no i nearly took my hand off because the polyester thread is a, a stronger thread and you try breaking it with your hands oh good grief it was ridiculous so just take the cotton let's move these out the way and we're just going to add a little bit of cotton just scrunch it and stretch it with your fingers then we can have the had with the H, then we can add the hexagons. Just add a little bit of adhesive just on the cotton as well. Like so, just stretch that out a little bit, just so some of the fibers are going to be visible. And I love the fact that we can use the shapes from the stencils. We don't have to use the stencil as a stencil. We can use it as if we're die cutting pieces out. So let's just place that piece there because that will go there. Yeah. And obviously when you've got those cotton threads, it just you, you just need to make sure that it's all stuck down. That's going to go there, so that's fine. So just make sure that's stuck down. Let's add a little bit more adhesive here. There we go. Just a little bit more. You do need to take a few moments just to make sure that your adhesive grabs hold. I'm going to hide some of that anyway in just a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the small stamp, the one that I use continually all the time, and I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping just to this wood slice. This is one of the Tim Holtz wood slices. Let me just show you the detail on that wood piece, just from my little stamp from the Heart Grunge. And what I'm going to do is grab a bit more cotton This will add me much needed texture 
And don't forget, we're not going for a difficult design. We're going for a design that's nice and easy. You just need to make sure that you add plenty of adhesive. Let's go in like that. There we go. Just press that down. Like so. You see, I already love it. Just from a simple background. And that's half the fun. Well, I think it is. Half the fun is playing around with your projects. Well, let me just check if I want one more. And I think we'll have one more hexagon just because it makes it an odd number. And that will play with my head if it's even. It's just the way I am. Plays around with my head. What did I do with the bits of card? There we go. So let's have a smaller hexagon. One of the small ones. Here we go. Tracy can't find anything. Let's have one of the little hexagons. I've got my finger stuck in the stencil then. <laughs> oh, I'm dangerous. Let me just cut that out. Do you know, I started decluttering my wardrobes and what I couldn't believe was how dusty the coat hangers were, as if I'd never dusted. Honestly, the coat hangers were so dusty. I was thinking, imagine how much dust your clothes collect when you're not when you're not wearing them. I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. So let me just check. Just so there's five elements. It just needs to have five elements can't cope with it if it's if it's an even number so let's not think about it and just go a little bit random I can't remember where I've inked there we go I just love how the background can work so we just need our ink blending I don't need to add any more ink to my cut and dry foam because the cut and dry foam is already covered with ink, so that's fine. And I don't want to cover everything up. So I don't want it there. Maybe if I get it the right way up. Up there. You see, I have to play around a little bit deciding where I want it. So it's just important that you either take a picture, look through a camera lens. Sometimes you can see better when you look through a lens. You can just see the composition a little bit better. Liking this already. Right, let's move this out of the way. I say this every time, move this out of the way. I talk as if I've got a desk about six foot long. There's nowhere to move it out of the way. What I'm going to do now is take my little stamp from the heart grunge and just add a little bit of detail in the background. We don't want to cover up all that beautiful faux wood technique. We don't want to cover all that up, but I'm just going to extend the stamp in a little bit. And I love how there's a little um, splat on there as well. I do love that, really makes me happy. So just, that's it, we're just adding that in threes. I adore that stamp. You see, and I'm already loving the little cluster that I'm creating. So what I'm going to do now is grab my B stamp. And just so that you can see the difference in the Bs. So we've got the honey bee. And then we've got the little critters. And the little critters, it's the same bee, but he's a little bit smaller, look. 
just so that you can see the difference in size. I like the fact that I've got two different sizes. I'm glad Abs allowed me to have two different sizes. Right, I didn't. Th I don't think I pulled an acrylic block out because I was using my hand. So let's just grab that acrylic block. Whoops. There we go. Let's grab that. That's it. And this time I'm going to stamp in black. Well, that sticks down well, doesn't it? Let's give it a clean. Let's see if you'll stick down now. Give that a dry. Wow, wouldn't you think that Tracy had cleaner stamps so they stick on the acrylic block? No, of course you wouldn't. Let's clean all that up. Get rid of that. Shall we try again? There we go. So if you're finding that, like me, your stamps are well loved, well used, then just make sure that you give them a wash and then they'll stick back on the acrylic block. It's just because you've got you've used loads of products in the past. It might be embossing powders, it might be glitters. Just little bits accumulate on the back of your stamp and you just need to give them a little wash, that's all. Look at the detail on that stamp. I just think that bee is superb. That's just, just so that you can see that. Oh, I love him. Absolutely love him. So just cut that bee out. I'm going to cut all the sections out. What I didn't do is we, we know we have to get into good habits. Let's just give that a little blot. Sometimes we can get a little bit carried away and we forget to blot. What we also need to do is to remember, give your fingers a little wipe. But if you've been using that brown ink, like I have, just give your fingers a little wipe. I hope you enjoyed the videos. I appreciate all your feedback. Sometimes as a, a tutor or a, just a, a creative person, it's difficult sometimes to know, you know, what projects to create. There are so many talented people out there now. It does get very difficult to stay unique, but we can keep trying. And as long as between us, between me and you, we enjoy ourselves, well, I think that's all that matters. As long as me and you are having a good time, nothing else matters. So just cut out the little bee. Like so. Now you can cut the wings out of acetate, which is what a lot of us do. So you can cut them out of acetate if you wish. Cut them out of uh, Juralar, which is a product that you can heat and you can bend it. So you could use that. It's nice to add a little bit of dimension to the wings though, it just brings them to life. But I want to keep this, this project pretty vintage, I don't really want to add any other colours, but if I was doing a project and it had got some blues in it, sometimes I add a touch of blue to the wings. But I do want to keep this all vintage, I'm indulging myself as well because I adore vintage projects they just make me happy and if you wanted you could add a flower but i'm just concentrating on the bees this time i've planted i've, I've planted some well i did in autumn i planted some bee bombs and apparently you just chuck them on the ground and then you get all these plants coming up that are attract you know that the bees love but just look at that that bee is fantastic and then what he's going to do, that bee is going to sit on here like that. Adore it. Of course, there's going to have to be a little bit of dimension on his wings. And what you can do, if you wish, is you can add a little bit of colour, if you wish, to his body, just to make him a little bit vintage. 
but I'm not too not too bothered I must admit because I'm going to add a little brown to the wings so just add our B here like that I love I love adding the little embellishment things and everything I do you know when you're finishing off a project and you're adding little bits are you doing another piece of card do you know half the time I don't know what the card is I'm picking up I've got that many bits of card so let's just move that on one side why did I take the B off the acrylic block because I need it again to stamp the wings so this time I'm just going to stamp the wings and that's with the Versafine Claire pine cone just stamping the wings with that no it did I just do that with black? No, with black. What am I talking? Which one's that? I don't know whether I've put the wrong lid on the wrong thing. No, I haven't. Listen, don't ask me if I've got any brain cells because that's just no. When I've been awake more than 12 hours, there's no, there's, there's no hope really of knowing what's going to come out of my mouth. And before we cut... What I want to do is just apply some vintage photo and just dab it over the wings because we're just going to cut the wings out just so it's got some dimension. We're just going to cut those out. What you could do is you could cut the wings out of acetate or even some recycled packaging, whatever you wanted to do. But again, I'm just keeping mine vintage, so that's me. You can cut the wings out separate if you want, or you can just go across and cut that part of the body off as well, just so that you 3D the whole bit. But you can just 3D the wings if you want. So you can go across like this if it makes it easier for you, or you can just cut the wings separately. Entirely up to you. So... You can either 3D like that, like so, or you can just cut the wings off so that you just 3D the wings. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. So we're going to add that. And before we do that, we need to just bend it a little bit just to give a little bit of life to the wings. Just take those, make sure I'm still in camera. Just take those there and then this one, like so. Just love adding, let me just lift that up, that little 3D element to the B. I just think that is gorgeous. Now, what I want to do is I want to add the little bee as well. So I'm going to put my honey bee. So the honey bee is stamp set 330. And then I'm going to grab the little critters bee, which is the smaller bee. But before I do, I'm just going to grab, let's just let me show you on the packaging. I'm just going to grab this stamp here, the honeycomb. And I just want to add a little bit of the stamping of the honeycomb, the hexagonal shapes, just because that'll add to the hexagons that are in the background. And of course, I decided to stamp this afterwards when I put the cluster down. But obviously you can stamp yours beforehand before you put the cluster down. But I didn't know where I was going. So absolutely love that look it extends the stamping can you see here it's got the numbers but it extends the hexagons as well gorgeous let's just add a little bit of the hexagon just on that side there lovely lovely background stamp just add a little bit of the hexagons there Okay, I was going to say, what have I done with the little critters bee? So 
going to ink that B that is not straight on the acrylic block. And obviously you can grab yourselves a brew now because you know I'm going to cut this little bee out. So you can grab yourselves a brew, especially while I cut out. Just going to give that a blot. And the good thing is you know that these are all going to work together. Because you know that they are the same bee that's been sized, so it's brilliant. I was asked to, I didn't just make the bee for making the bee sake, I was asked if I could make it smaller. So that's why it was made smaller. So just cut this bee out. And I'm moving my card as usual, rather than the scissors. It's my card that moves. So just cut that out. And what I'll do is, I'll, at the end, I'll show you how to create a paper cast with the hexagon stencil. Just so you can see. how you can get a different look. There we go. Cut the little bee. And if you wanted to add some colour to the wings, you could have added that beforehand. I'm going to add some 3D element to the wings. Oh, I've just knocked that, haven't I? When I stamped, poor lopsided B. We don't want a lopsided B, do we? So just colour a little bit of that with the vintage photo. There we go. And I'm going to add a 3D element to these wings as well. add a 3d element to that so i'm going to cut the wings out again stamping with the black nocturne ink when i use an old stamp i always think oh i should have just used it more there just isn't enough hours in the day i want to use everything more but there just isn't enough hours Especially when it's gardening season as well. When it's gardening season, let's just add that colour first of all. When it's gardening season, there's always so many things to do outside. Never mind inside. So we just cut those wings out. So it's up to you if you go across the body, as I said before, or you cut out each of the wings individually. Either way works. Just bend your wings just to give them a little bit more life. And then let's adhere that. Let me just press that down so that we can let's make sure that's up a bit just turn that be a little bit that's it just so that you can see it so far just so that you can see that let's just add some white splatters Don't have to add the white splatters if you don't want. And if you can't do the white splatters, 
you can use watered down paint i do like the the posca paint pens but if you don't not a problem at all right what i want to get now whoops I want to get these marquee, mini marquee letters. Why didn't I get them out beforehand? Because that would be asking too much. So, what we want is a B. Let's see if we can find a B. Of course, we can't find a B. Of course, the B will be at the bottom somewhere. Come on, I haven't got the patience to wait for it. There are that many in here. There's loads in here. So let's see if we can find a B. Find an 8. An A. Come on. I would like a B. I know I haven't used, there's the B. Yay. Now I have to put all these back in again. Oh, joy. Take a handful, because you're gonna lose the will to live if you watch me putting them in one at a time. But there are loads. Absolutely loads, numbers, plus signs. Brilliant they are. But you know what I'm like for embellishments. Just drop one on the floor. No, I dropped two on the floor. Let's move that out of the way. Then I want one of these little paper clips like so so I'm going to add the B there so let's stick that down I love this already there's something about vintage makes I just love them So just adding the adhesive just behind the B. So just adding the B on there. I'm just going to add this clip. Just so that you can see that. We've got that B there. I love this. So then what I've got on this stamp the background stamp it's got the word b so we're just going to stamp that in black just ink that up and stamp it onto the card again i'm not using an acrylic block got the word b i'm still going to block that and then i'm going to cut that out You know when I said that I wouldn't get disturbed because it's in the evening? My daughter's now messaging me. I spoke to her beforehand. But no, we're messaging. She's sending photos. Lovely, which often means that she's seen something she likes. So that could be dangerous. So let's just see where we want to add this, this word B. I think it's going to, yeah, it's going under there. I love creating little clusters. Grab my little scissors. I use my little scissors just to place things down for frequently. There we go. Just so that you can see, let's see that. Just so you can see that B in there. I'm in love with this. I absolutely love it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to a black mat. 
because it will definitely pop more if I add it to a black mat. Now you need to make sure that you get plenty of adhesive on your card, on the reverse of your card, especially if you've got things that have got a bit of weight. Luckily, there's no weight in this. Even the wood slice has got no weight on. My mat is a quarter of an inch bigger than the actual card. But I need to hold that down just to make sure that I've got it in the right place. Then I can just shuffle it a little bit just to make sure it's even. And I'm not going to rush just to place it onto the next, the card blank, because it's important to just make sure that that's all stuck. Then I've got a clean piece. I don't think this this paper's too dirty now. I can get my copy of paper so I'm working on a clean area. Make sure my card's the right way up. And then I can stick this down. me a couple of seconds just to align everything and then I can press it down and it takes a couple of seconds for the adhesive to grab hold which gives you a couple of minutes just to make sure everything's okay and if we take a look at that card I'm really pleased with that I absolutely love that card and that's just plain with stamp sets you know that I neglected a little bit and I shouldn't because those bees go with all the flowers but I just wanted to show how you can use the bees on their own right what if you want to do a different background for the bees let me give you a different technique so let's take our stencil move this all out of the way Grab some tissues. These are just Kleenex tissues. Doesn't matter what tissue you use. You can use toilet roll if you want. I use the tissues because it gives me a little bit more sturdiness. What you need is a stipple brush. And what you need is some PVA glue. My PVA glue is dried at the bottom of there. I can actually pick that out now if I want. Ooh, I'll do that later. So just any cheap PVA glue. Just make sure this is down to the bottom. There are different ways of doing paper casts. You just work with the way that works for you best. So I'm just going to add some adhesive. That'll be plenty. There we go. So what you can see is I've got just a, a little dollop, not too much. And then what you want to do, I didn't bring any water with me, so I'll just use the water out of my spritzer bottle and just cover the PVA with water. There's nothing technical about it. It's literally, it's just covered the top of the PVA glue. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stir that PVA to make a mixture so it's just pva and water and you're just making a mixture and just keep keep stirring so you've got that pva and water mixture okay what you want to do then I always find it best if you want colour, you can either leave it plain and then paint it afterwards or you can add colour beforehand. With the stencils, I do like to add colour beforehand as well. It just, it just works for me. Now trying to find my grey ink pad. So what I've got is, let's move all these out of the way. We've got Versafine Claire Morning Mist and we've got Versafine Claire Pinecone. And what you're going to do 
is you're going to go over your stencil with the ink. So you're just swiping over. Don't think about it. Just swipe over with the morning mist and with the pine cone. So the pine cone can go straight over the top. There we go. That's fine. I'm not even thinking about it. So what I'm just going to do is just give it a wipe underneath and just make sure we're working on a dry area. So we've got those two colours on there and what you need is one, two, three, four, five tissues and these are three ply. It doesn't matter if you use two ply but I wouldn't use any less than that. And what you do is you place your tissue onto this hexagon stencil. Pick up your mixture on the stipple brush, tip off the excess and tart, tart, start to stipple with your stippling brush. Now, until you get going, you need to hold it in place. And you need to work on a non-stick craft sheet just so you can wipe away this adhesive. Let's move our card out of the way. I'll show you a, a project I did with a paper cast with the stencil. And what I'll do is I'll come back another day with this paper cast and finish a card because this paper cast needs to dry overnight. So don't mess with it too much. That was a little bit much moisture. So as you can see, I've just patted down with my stipple brush. Let me just make sure you can see that in camera. Yes, you can. Don't worry about the creases. That all adds to it. Place your second tissue down and then press. Press that down so it soaks up a bit of that moisture. Just press it down and then do exactly the same. Go over the stencil and don't add too much more moisture. Just dab it over in every crevice of the stencil. And you don't need to make your arms ache, you need to relax. You don't need to press too hard. Don't need to press that too hard. So then what you do is take your third tissue, that's a three ply tissue. I know some use toilet roll. I like to use the tissue because it gives me something really sturdy. The tissue, the toilet roll does as well, but everybody does it in different ways. This is what works for me. Nice and easy, nice and quick, nothing too technical. You know me by now, I don't like anything too technical. I don't like too much technical information. I like it to be simple. If it's not simple to achieve, then I don't want to do it because I lose interest. So I want it to be simple. And sometimes the simplest techniques are the best. So just dip in there. And what you do is you have a paper casting session and you do your paper casts all in one go. So just keep stippling. So you wouldn't just do one paper cast like me in one sitting. You would do several paper casts. So then your fourth tissue, press that down to make sure it grabs a hold and you don't have to hold it in place and then stipple again. See, sometimes it's very difficult to demo this on TV because obviously it, <laughs> you haven't got the time to do five layers. So sometimes it's very difficult to show that on TV. So 
So just keep layering the PVA and water and try not to get a straight edge. You don't want, you don't really want a straight edge. And then apply your final tissue. And what happens is when this dries, it dries solid. You can actually machine stitch through it when it's dry. It dries that solid. But as I say, you can do it with black tissues if you want. And then you can add your gilding wax over the top. You can, add your, you can do it in white if you want. Then paint it black and add your gilding waxes over the top. Or like me, you can just leave it as a plain paper cast in white. Or you can add ink like I've done here. There are so many different ways that you can do it. So that'll do for now. Let's move that out of the way. Let's move the glue out of the way. And what you do is you lift this up. And there you've got your paper cast. You can try your oxides, but your oxides will bleed a little bit more. This just gave a touch of colour. But as you can see, I've got depth. Let me show you what it looks like. This was done with oxides. So the oxides bleed a little bit more. But just so that you can see that, can you see the depth of the paper cast? But when it's dry, we can also add colour. But that's a paper cast with a thinner bar stencil and I've machine stitched through it here. So that shows you what it's like. So what I'll do is I'll come back when it's dry. Let me show you. At the moment it's like this. You can still see the depth. Just so you can see there. And I've not added much colour to this because I'll add some colour afterwards. And I'll show you that when I come back to my YouTube channel, what it's like when it's dry. So I hope you enjoyed that just to give you another technique. And I'll show it you when I come back and do another video with the bee. Because obviously these hexagons will go with the bee. So we'll create another bee card with that. So here's the original card we created. And I absolutely love it. So I hope you enjoy creating that as much as I have. I hope you'll have a go at the faux paper casting. So I hope you hope you enjoy that. Sorry, that was the faux. This is the faux wood panelling and that's paper casting. So this is the faux wood panelling. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you all share all your makes with me. And um, I hope you all have a lovely week weekend. It's a bank holiday weekend, isn't it? So I all hope you have a lovely weekend. Let's keep our fingers crossed for some nice weather. Love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.